Hello, everyone. Welcome today. I need to give you an update about our June So Confident project. June is the month of making the Edgewater dress, which we adore. Here it is in its three color blocked form two knits, a turquoise, teal, and a green, and a woven fabric. And the video came out last Friday, which those of you who are members of So Confident, I'm sure, have, have and hopefully have watched or plan to watch it. But normally, our kits are available at the same time. I think I told you that we had engaged a company out of South Carolina to make our kits. We were thrilled to not make them within our studio anymore. And when we engaged them first for the uh, May kit, they did a, a fabulous job and things were on time and it went great. And now all of a sudden they have failed us and our kits are not here. We thought they were going to be here this week and now I'm not even sure about that. So those of you who pre-ordered a kit, uh, one of the four colors that this is available in, we sincerely apologize. The kits are coming, you will get them. We're not exactly sure when, but we're sure hoping next week. So bear with us. We're going to bring the kit making back into our studio here. So we'll be back on track for July. And hopefully this won't happen again. So nevertheless, but it's still an exciting project. Uh, some of you are staying right up to date with all the projects. And some of you are a couple months behind or maybe six months behind. But um, hopefully bear with us. And um, we'll get you the kits just as soon as we can. All right. Enough of that. Today, we are, well, uh, first of all, I have another little something I want to tell you. So last week, we were uh, graced with the uh, presence of three fantastic friends, customers, students of ours. Um, they, three friends that met from three cities, from Phoenix, Colorado Springs, and Chicago area. They all converged and came shopping at the sewing workshop. It was really, really fun. And we tend to get some guests here during the summer. So if you're passing through Kansas on your way from California to New York, stop in. We even had uh, a gal who talked her husband into a slight diversion. They were going from Toronto to Idaho with a little detour to Topeka to shop. So you know, we're never that far out of the way from anywhere. You're welcome to come and uh, check us out, try on the clothes, shop for fabric, see what we're all about. But Carol Scott, who's from Chicago, <clears throat> I say Chicago, it's Chicago area, uh, suburb of Chicago, and I can't think of the name of it offhand, but uh, she always has great tips. And one of the most interesting tips that she gave me last week was how she marks her fabric from her patterns. So once she has copied off her patterns or had them printed from an outside source or printed them on her home printer, she then takes an awl and she makes a hole in the various markings on her pattern. So then all she has to do is use some kind of a marking pen or pencil. She uses like a white tailor's pencil. And she just goes into each hole and marks the dot. And what I like about that is, unlike me who puts a pin into something perhaps and then pulls the fabric apart or if I'm cutting out single layer I'm still having to pull at least the tissue back to make a marking you know there's I suppose some chance that I'm going to be a little bit off on my marking but with the holes in the pattern right on the fabric that hasn't been moved you're going to be super accurate about that and I thought it was a really interesting concept so I'm passing it along to you as a tip, Carol, you could send that to Threads and get $25. So um, hmm, maybe we should do that with Carol. I don't know. All right. Um, today is a fun day for me because we are introducing a special edition kit. Now, you know, we have kits with the So Confident program every month. But we are beginning to think about kits for anyone. You don't have to belong to So Confident to uh, think about this kit. And we're going to be introducing some limited edition special offering kits throughout the year. And this is really the first one. I have it on. It is the cottage shirt. And we are doing it in this fabric, which I think is so cool. We have discovered some new, and I say we, it's really Betsy who's sort of on the alert all the time for new resources for fabrics. 
And she has discovered various companies uh, in Europe. England, Denmark, interest, UK, all over. It seems like all the really interesting fabric companies are coming now out of Europe rather than our traditional sources, and it's really been fun. So this was a, a source that she found in the UK for some new cotton lawn fabrics. So this is a fabric that's called Weekend Getaway. I fell in love with it. I love it because I love things that have sort of graphic designs to them. I love people designs. And this is really great because it has cool and warm colors, and I think you can wear this with almost anything. So the cottage shirt pattern of ours is just one of those great patterns that, to me, is the perfect summer shirt. It's like a, uh, um, well, I can't think of the name, um, the kind of summer shirt that, help me, Aaron. I'm, I'm not, to, I'm the kind of shirt that, um, that this is, only it's an upscale camp, camp shirt. Thank okay. you very much. <laughs> camp shirt. But this has way more interesting elements than your ordinary camp shirt. First of all, it has a collar and stand. And the stand is fairly narrow. So I'm going to give you a couple of tips on how to sew this collar and stand. What I like about it especially is this really deep hem. So this has about a, a six inch finished hem and that gives this a, a quality that a lot of shirts don't have that have just tiny little narrow hems. And that hem, six inch hem, dies into an equal length vent at the side. It has a back yoke, so there's a seam across here. And it has this nice little uh, sleeve placket. Now, the one thing I've heard about this is that this can run a little narrow. And let's say you're making a medium in this. But you've measured this and you've measured uh, this portion of your arm and you realize that there's really not enough room in here. You know, I have, what do I have? Maybe four, four inches of ease or something in this. But some people um, need a little more room. Well, you can always cut a sleeve opening for a large or an extra large, use the dot along the side seam that matches that size. Even though you're cutting out a medium, maybe you're cutting out an extra large band and you're sewing to the extra large dot at the side seam. So that's how you help that. Here it is in a solid linen. We love our linens for summer. They're so cool and wonderful. But this fabric, is fantastic. This is cotton lawn. Now we were talking about this earlier. It is lawn according to the manufacturer, but I think it's a little heavier than that. It's not as heavy as a quilting cotton, but it is opaque, and I think of lawn as being somewhat transparent. This is not transparent. This is definitely opaque. It's lightweight, but it's very smooth. It's very nice quality. It reminds me a lot of Liberty of London fabrics, which have a, a quality to them like no other. This is a singular feel as well. And I just love the way we pull in all of these fantastic colors from golds to pinks to plum to blues, greens. And I'm going to show you later what I think goes with this. But so far, I haven't found anything that doesn't go with it almost. But let's talk about a couple of techniques that uh, relate to this cottage shirt that may help you make it a little bit better. So one of the things that I've learned over time, and I've talked about this before, but I don't know that I've ever talked about it in relationship to a collar or a corner that's on an angle. So I started sewing when I was really young. I took junior high sewing. Mrs. Creasy was my teacher. She's still around. I like her. Uh, I liked her a lot. She was a fantastic teacher. And really, I remember making my first apron and my first skirt. And I was often running from there. But she did teach me to cut across the corners before turning the corner. Well, Mrs. Creasy, I've learned a different way. Now I just trim both seam allowances down to about 3 eighths of an inch, not any narrower than that. And I do not cut across the corner. 
So I use the either under collar or interface side. If I'm just interfacing one collar, I'm going to interface the under collar. Sometimes I will interface both collars. Just depends on the weight of the fabric um, and how crisp I want that to look, or if I want a more rumpled look, then maybe I don't interface it at all. Uh, but either way, towards the under collar or interfacing side, I'm going to use this stitching line as my line to fold the seam allowance to the under collar side. And I press that for about an inch in the corner. Now this is after I have pressed these seams open first, and then I am going to fold and press this seam allowance to the underside, under collar. I leave that folded, and then I fold the adjacent seam allowance down and over that. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six layers of fabric in this corner. Now, I don't know if you can see, but that seam allowance sticks out just a little bit beyond this edge because of the angle. And sometimes collars are even more acute than this. This particular cottage shirt collar isn't a right angle, but it's not an acute angle either. So all I do is I take my scissors and I just trim the excess along this edge so that it's even with this fold. That's the only trimming that I do. So that when I turn my corners, the corners are filled with the two fabric, the two seam allowances, the fabrics from the two seam allowances, and I get a much, much crisper and uh, definite well, just a better looking corner than if I'm trying to get rid of all that fabric and then I'm poking at that and getting a dog tail corner, or dog eared corner. Dog tail corner? Dog eared corner. <laughs> at the wrong uh, side of the dog. <clears throat> okay, um, so that is my trick for a perfect corner. Give it a try, I think you'll really like it. It doesn't matter what weight the fabric is, it can be really thin, really heavy. I even do this on pillow corners when I'm using heavy tapestries and velvets or whatever. Thick fabrics work just as well doing that same process. All right, so then when we're doing the collar and stand. So the trick here is, we talked about this last week when making the Florence shirt, and I think Alex referenced a template that she had made to, to sew the stands. Well, I thought I would explain that just a little bit more fully today. So you take your pattern piece, and here at the curved end, you mark your 5 8 inch seam allowance. I just take a little seam gauge, a pencil, and just make that a nice curve. And then I use a tracing paper and tracing wheel to actually trace this line onto a piece of tag board or a manila file folder. And using a rotary cutter, I will cut out that curve and make myself a little template. I have all kinds of little templates in my stash. I've labeled them with what they are, cottage, Florence, because they're all different. The curves are different. The widths are different. This happens to include the entire seam allowance so I know exactly where to line that up. So then when I am sewing the ends of my collar stand, you know, I'm getting the front of the shirt out of the way um, so that I'm just sewing the two layers of fabric. Then I put my template down and I use a friction pen to mark that curve. If you try to sew this curve by just following the outer 5 8 inch raw edge, I guarantee you, you will have two different curves, one for each stand. But this guarantees that you're going to have the same curve on both sides. And then notice this red line. I will trim out the seam allowance along the uh, collar edge, but when I'm trimming through the curve, I am trimming that way down to about an eighth of an inch. I do not notch that out like Mrs. Creasy told me to do. Instead, because this is now in the bias, this will uh, press just really beautifully. 
I finger press this little seam open or sometimes I'll use a curved end of a tailoring board. But either way, I first open up that seam and then when I turn it, it's a really nice, beautiful edge. So two good techniques for better collars and stands. Actually, would you like to take some questions? Sure. Um, do you interface the collar when you're sewing medium weight linen? Yes, I do uh, interface. I tend to interface collars no matter the weight, particularly the under collar, especially the under collar, not always the upper collar. I also shape them over, um, like I wrap a collar around a ham, fold it down, and give it a steam and a little hand press so I've shaped it so that offsets the two raw edges of the collar a little bit and then I will base that and, and keep that shape. I have refrained from making the cottage um, because of the length. Um, would lengthening the shirt by one to two inches throw off the overall silhouette? No, this shirt lengthens really, really well. You can lengthen it two inches. We even have one that's a tunic length. It can be a dress and anything in between. It doesn't sh throw off the proportions at all. It's fantastic. Um, if you lengthen it, would you lengthen it just in the front or both the front and the back? I think if you just Well, if you're lengthening the front, inches. I would lengthen the back. What I thought you were going to say was, could you lengthen the back differently than the front? And I think you can. Like you could have a shorter front, longer back. That's a good look. But I wouldn't have a longer front and a shorter back. Um, did you match the design on your shirt, the print? Yes. I did match the design. I saw another question. You here. always do that from the center front line. You, find, you mark the center front line on the first piece. You're always cutting out single layer, of course. And you mark the center front line, and then you are going to match that center front line with the adjoining piece. And hopefully, you know, what's nice is if you have enough fabric, you can just put one piece here and one piece here so you're lining up the center front. And then you know it's going to match. Would lengthening the arms to elbow length mess up the hang of the garment? I have never done that. Um, I don't know about elbow length. I think you could easily lengthen this another inch or two. I don't know about six inches or five inches or something like that. I have not done it. I wouldn't think it would be a problem, but haven't done it. And is there enough fabric in the kit to match the front? There's enough fabric in the kit to match the front. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is the kit. So the kit includes all of a sudden, I've forgotten the amount of yardage, but yardage, <laughs> the fabric, and one, two, three, four, five buttons that are I especially picked out to go with this, and a spool of thread. So that's included in your kit. Do you think you could lengthen it one or two inches with the kit yardage? I would think so, but you know, I probably need to look at that. Um, oh, yeah, I would think one or two inches. One or two no inches. More. Than that. Should be okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Depending on the size. Uh, Betsy linked to the kit, so that would tell them how what the okay. yardage is too. Um, would you recommend bus starts for better hang for larger sizes? Absolutely. If you are need someone who needs a full bus adjustment, this garment is no different than any other. Okay, that's all I see for now. Okay. All right. So because well, first of all, let me show you what I have on with it. Um, I have on Hudson pants, and I've used the West End pocket. But this is from the project from So Confident February. I, saw, I, I wear these pants a lot. This pale pink, I don't know, it just goes with everything. It's become sort of my off-white of the year, I guess, of the season. <laughs> but West End pants, I think, is a nice profile with the cottage shirt. The other pants that I think look really good with the cottage shirt for those of you who like a little more tailored look, these are the Hollywood pants. And the Hollywood pants are just a classic trouser. 
One of the things I like particularly about this pant is that it has, it does not have a separate waistband in the front. So the front is cut all in one, and then there's a facing, but the back has a separate waistband. So this is a nice smooth look in the front. It has a, fan, we have a fantastic method for making a um, fly front that we learned from Sandra Betsina. Has a little tab with a button and two pleats and single welt pockets in the front and a single welt pocket and a tab in the back. So Aaron made these and they're made out of our linen that's been washed. So they're very, they have that perfect weighty drape that linen gets after you have washed it and dried it and softened it. Now some of the uh, linens that we have are already pre-softened, but I still go ahead and pre-wash them. One of the things I've learned about linen is that I do pre-wash the fabric, I dry the fabric, and then I may or may not wash the pants, but I don't dry them again, or I dry clean them, which, or maybe go back and forth a little bit on that. But classic trousers, this is the, the season of wearing that slouchy trouser. You make them a little bit on the larger size, so they're just sitting on your hips. There's lots of ease. Don't make these too tight. I think the look is a little looser, baggier than we've maybe worn them in the past. So Hudson pants, Hollywood pants are two great looks with the cottage shirt. But I picked out a, a several fabrics that I think really go with this fabric for bottoms. They can also make cottage shirts, but I'm showing them as uh, either Hudson pants or Hollywood pants. So let's go through them. You can see that I've picked out both uh, cool colors and warm colors, and because I know there's, we have both of you in the audience. So this is pretty much the fabric that uh, Aaron used, if not the fabric. We can't decide if it's the fabric or not, but it's <laughs> definitely the same color. So this is all linen. And this is fabric that you can see linen does have wrinkles, but after you wash linen, then the wrinkling changes character. And instead of getting these creases like this, you're going to get an overall rumpling, which I really, really like. And after you wash them, you know, sometimes you don't even have to ever iron them again. I mean, I, I used to be the kind of person who would every morning, if I was wearing linen, I would press them, get it all crisp and nice, and then in two hours or 10 minutes, whatever, it would be wrinkled. Now I, I hardly bother. I embrace the wrinkles. Now this is a new fabric to us and it's very, very drapey. It's that liquid kind of fabric. New source for us. Um, it is rayon and spandex. So rayon, you know, has this fabulous ability to drape differently than linen. Um, so it's a very, it's a beautiful, beautiful color. What do we call this color? Uh, rust. It's got a little more pink in it, perhaps, than a true rust rust, but it definitely, I think, pulls out the, um, the rusty tones of the fabric. Now this, I'm going to be showing more of this fabric late, uh, later, uh, next week as a matter of fact, but this is a brand new kind of linen for us from a brand new source. Um, it is all linen, yes, in this great denim color, but this is, you're seeing these wrinkles and rumples. This is the way this fabric is. This is the way it will stay. This is the, even if you press them out, it'll come back to this. That's the look. When I was in Santa Fe, I went into one of the great stores there and looked at a lot of linen clothes and everything on the rack is crushed and softened and wrinkled. And that's the look. This is the newest look. Now, the fabric that I have on is my famous viscose and linen, one of my favorite fabrics. I, we sell it in so many colors year round, and if we don't have it, we'll always try to reorder it. We can't always get every color again, but we try. And so that's what this is. This is viscose and rayon in orange Gina, a lighter tone of this rust. But you get to have a combination of a linen-like look, but the drapiness of viscose rayon. This is the fabric that I have on right here. This is the pale pink. This, this pink is not exactly in here, 
but I like the way it looks with it. So you don't have to match. You don't have to say, oh my gosh, that is not quite that, well, don't worry about that. There's, there's a certain uh, overall blend of colors that I think really works. Same with this. This color is not exactly in here, but there is a plum. And the, with the other tones, this is a great dark neutral. And this is, called, this is linen, all linen. And this is called port. And that's a good description of that. Everybody needs a pair of camel pants. And we call this clay, also a good name for that. This is 100% linen. But these are the kinds of, of mid-weight linens that are great for pants. This black is the same as this. This is the rayon and spandex. And there's not very much spandex in it, so it's not like it's super stretchy. But there is some stretch, which of course always makes it more comfortable to wear. So if you want a great summer weight black pair of pants, that's your fabric. All right. Okay, so one of the questions was about the rayon spandex. So you're saying that would be a good for the Hudson and the Hollywood pants? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, you, could make, you could make Picassos out of this. You could make Chesneys, West Ends, any of our pants that are not super fitted. Like I wouldn't make um, getaway jeans out of this. I probably wouldn't make Madrid pants out of this. But I would make every one else of our patterns, every other one of our patterns. Yeah. And would you say that that is a true camel? Um, or what are the kind of the undertones of well, that Well, I think it has more of a burnt um, character than a true camel. Uh, but it falls into that category. But this is definitely a more uh, raw umber color. In fact, that'd be a pretty good name for it. But, mm -hmm. but clay, it definitely has a little more gold orange to it. Is the cottage shirt higher in the front? Or is it the well, same length? The, as the cottage back? shirt is basically a couple of squares. So the pattern, when you cut it out, is very square. And when you put squares on your body, then the sides get longer, and the front and the back are shorter. So it's not like the patterns are shaped like that. It's the fact of the rectangle on a curve. And can you turn around in your top so they can see the back? Yep. This is the most comfortable fabric I've had on this season. It's very soft. I'm, my skin is real sensitive to fabrics. This is really comfortable. I wear this with quite a bit of ease, which I think you should. You know, I can't really tell you how much ease, but a good 20 inches, probably, 10 on each side, maybe. Don't make this too small. This is the look. Uh, there was one comment that, um that it was interesting. Um, they'd love to see a so confident unit or a class in general on the Hollywood pant because there's so many great learning techniques. Yes, and we have just been discussing that. Uh, that's a real possibility for next year, actually. Um, what size are you wearing? I am wearing a small. Can you get this new, she says new material, material. I wonder if she means the print um, and other patterns. Uh, yes, and we are ordering some of them. I believe, and Betsy may be able to tell me differently, but I think this might be the only one we have at the moment. But we are invested in ordering from this company and we'll be getting in more prints. But this is the only colorway of this print. There was a, um, a mention about the colorway. Yeah. So. I mean, it's, it's not just the only colorway that we have. It's the only colorway that they have. Is the green linen opaque as it is lighter weight? 
it's definitely opaque. And it's, um, I wouldn't call this lightweight. Um, it's definitely pant weight. I mean, it's light enough that you could make a top out of it, but I consider this a, a, a perfect pant weight fabric. Um, Betsy said that they, she is putting a few fabrics online that are from the same company. Okay. Um, is the Hollywood fly front the same as the getaway jean? Yes, it is. Exactly the same. It's the best technique for a fly front. It's foolproof. If you follow the directions exactly, you're not sewing in the dark, so to speak like so many fly front techniques are, where you're hoping when you do the final top stitching that you're catching something. Well, the zipper is already there in place and the top stitching is just decorative at that point. Could you make a top out of the blue linen? Absolutely. Make a great top. You think any of them? I mean, you said earlier. That I think any of these would make uh -huh. great tops. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just because I'm talking about them as bottoms, they're not so heavy that they can't be used as tops. You could make cottage shirts, Hugo blouse, uh, any of the summer shirts. Or it doesn't even have to be summer, but I'm thinking summer. So I'm thinking Hugo and cottage and uh, mix it top and Zane and I'm not sure what else. That's all I see. That's it? Okay. All right. So we're making a big, big deal this week of our cottage shirt kits, and they are on sale. We have limited quantity, but I think we have a decent quantity, so grab yours. Um, the other patterns that are on sale, it caught, now this does not include a pattern. That's just your fabric and thread and buttons. You still need to order the pattern if you don't have it. And then the other two patterns on sale are the Hudson pants and the Hollywood pants. The Hollywood pants are a download. The Hudson pants are both print and download. And the cottage shirt is print or download. Um, we have some tutorials. Now last week we talked about the collar and stand and that tutorial is on sale. There are, uh, again, um, there are two different methods of installing a collar and stand in that tutorial one of which is in the actual instructions of the cottage shirt. But there is a second method, a burrito method we call it. It's also explained in that tutorial. So we're leaving that on sale for the second week. And then um, for So Confident Series 7, the second quarter, we have a whole tutorial on making the cottage shirt start to finish. It's a very comprehensive uh, tutorial and that one is on sale as well. So kits, Three patterns, two tutorials, and you're good for the week. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't see any other right. additional well, questions. Thank you so much. I'm already sewing up the project for next Tuesday, so I will see you then.